Let's take a look at this function and find its critical numbers. And it looks like a messy function, but you'll see it will clean up nicely. So the only way we could possibly find critical numbers is to take the derivative. f prime of x, the derivative of this function, is equal to 2x squared. And if you have a hard time taking derivatives still, maybe this is one you want to practice on, but I'm just going to run through it, times uh, plus 9x minus 5. So the, it's just a power rule. It's just when the 3 came down, it, it multiplied, and this denominator went away, and same thing with the other one. Okay, so here is our derivative, and this is a polynomial function, so it's defined everywhere. We don't have to worry about the case where, where the derivative does not exist. But we do have to, to figure out when this is equal to 0. So first thing we did was find the derivative, and now we've got to figure out when it's equal to 0. That's the only way we could find our critical number. So let's set this thing equal to 0. And, and this is going to be uh, going back to algebra, an algebra problem where you had to learn how to factor, or and you probably went over it in pre-calculus. So to factor this, how are we going to do it? I know that for many people, they hate seeing a coefficient in front of x squared. makes the factoring a bit harder. But what we're going to do is we're just going to take the 2 and multiply it by negative 5. We get negative 10. And then we have to find the factors of 10, or sorry, of negative 10 that add up to 9. So what multiplies negative 10 and adds to positive 9? So 10 and negative 1. When you multiply them, you get negative 10. When you add them, you get positive 9. And now we're going to do our grouping method. So we're going to have 2x squared. We keep the first term. And then we add this first factor, and we tack an x on, so plus 10x. So we group those together. And in case you were curious, it wouldn't have mattered if you put the, one, the negative 1 first, and then you did 2x squared minus 1. Um, that, that would be okay too. It works both ways. I'm just going to go ahead and, and keep doing it this way though. And then we add to that the next group, which is going to be negative 1 with an x tacked on, um, minus 5. So we used, let me just show you what we've been using. We used this first term here, 2x squared, and the last term, minus 5. So we kept the 2x squared and we kept the minus 5. We ditched the 9x completely. But you can see that we really, we didn't, because 10x and negative 1x add to 9x. So we just kind of split the 9x up into this funny way, and we grouped. Okay, and we found that 10 and that 1 by getting the factors of, of negative 10 that added to 9x. Okay, so that's what we did so far, and, and hopefully you already know how to do this, but I know many of you probably need this review. Okay, and now we're just going to factor out what we can from each group. So in the left group we can get a 2x out of there and what's left is just going to be x plus 5 and then in the other group we can get a negative 1 out. So we take a negative 1 out and we get x plus 5. And now we have x plus 5 in both terms so we factor that out. And this is going to become 2x minus 1, that's what's left when we factor out an x plus 5, times by an x plus 5. Okay, and this whole thing is equal to 0. So we factored, we factored everything completely, and now we set it equal to 0, and that will give us our critical numbers. And, of course, the critical numbers are now going to be x is 1 half. So we just solved the, the first binomial, and then x is... Uh, x is 5. No, sorry, negative 5. Okay, so those are our two critical numbers. Our job is done. We've found our critical numbers. But I would like to, and I think it will be good for you if you stick around, I would like to look at a graph of what's going on. So this is the original function. This is the original function. Let's see if our critical numbers seem to line up with what we've already said. So here is negative 5. And does that correspond to a critical number? Is that a critical number? Well, we know it is because we, we've proven it algebraically. But you can see that when I draw that line up there, 
That is definitely the maximum. And so this negative 5 is a maximum, and it's a critical number. And we said that the derivative was equal to 0. That means the slope is 0. It's horizontal. And then here, let's see. Here is 1 half, and something funky happened when I stretched this graph, I'm assuming, because that's not lining up. Oh, no, that's 1. Sorry, that's 1. I have my tick marks confused. This is 1, which means this is 1 half right here, or somewhere in that range. And that corresponds to this minimum. OK, so the, the two critical numbers we found are, are maximum and minimums. And it's because their slope is 0. The maximum point, the slope is 0, and the minimum point, the slope is 0. So the derivative was equal to 0 at negative 5 and 2. We've already said that. So I can just keep saying it over and over, but understanding that relationship is, is important. Now let me show you. Oop, I picked the same graph again. It's not what I wanted to do. Uh, okay. There we go. Let me show you the derivative graphed with its, or the function graphed with its derivative. So in blue we have the same function, and in red we have the derivative. Now let's look at the critical numbers. We already know the derivative is going to be 0 at negative 5 and 1 half. Okay, we got that. Now, when we look at our function, we should be able to see that that the function, the slopes, are definitely going to be positive to the left of negative 5. The derivative is positive to the left of negative 5, so the slope should be. And that's true. If we Let me kind of chop this graph up in the little sections. So to the left of negative 5, the derivative is positive, and the slope should be positive, which is true. To the between negative one half, or sorry, between negative five and one half, the slope should all be negative because the derivative is negative there, and that's true. If we ex if we were to examine these slopes, they're all negative; they're pointing down. And then, to the right of one half, the derivative is positive, so the slope should all be positive, and that's true. That's what we're getting. Okay, so hopefully that helps you. Uh, understand a little bit better the relationship between uh, a function and its derivative. That's it's going to be important to be able to understand the relationship and graphically to be able to to look at a function and its derivative and and really understand what's going on, or even to be able to look at a function and and sketch the derivative, or vice versa even. Okay, so I'll in the next video we'll do a different type of function. See you then.